Welcome back to our video series on making a Pullman style desk. Now that's a reference to the old train cars called Pullmans where by day they were passenger compartments, but by night they transformed Autobot style into sleeper cars. So the same thing with this desk is that it looks like a dresser, but by flipping down the top drawer and opening up the top of it, you end up with a compact desk that's perfect for you know, a small apartment, a dorm room, uh, and just a great way to have a little home headquarters station for being able to take care of the stuff that you need to. Now in the other two parts of our series, we've tackled the case construction where we built it frame and panel style using solid wood. I'm working with white pine here. In the second video, we tackled that upper part that makes it a desk. There's a slide out tray, a drop down drawer, and some organizational details on the inside to keep all of your paperwork and devices ready to go. In this third one, we're looking at the drawers. And just to review here, since we're working with white pine, one of the challenges is that the way a white pine tree grows is that every year they send out branches horizontally called whorls. And those sections of branches are spaced depending on the health of the tree for that year. If it was a really good year, you get a nice wide spacing between those sets of knots. On poorer years, they're much closer together. So that makes it a challenge for when I need to come up with something like a 31 inch wide drawer front and finding clear material, because I want to minimize the knots. I know white pine's gonna have them, but I want to try and kind of cut down on it as much as possible. So here's the two other drawer fronts that I need. Now you can see this one looks pretty great. I got, I'm trying to keep straight grained quarter sawn look to everything here. You'll notice I get a little bit of a swirl in the grain and that was where a knot is. And you can see that on the backside, much more noticeable. That's something I definitely wanna avoid on the show surfaces for this project. So you can see that I've kind of minimized it there. On the bottom side of the drawer, again, you can see the knot is visible, but who's looking on the bottom edge of a drawer? Certainly not me. And if you're trying to look at the bottoms of drawers when you come to my house, I'm asking you to leave. So there's that drawer. The other drawer front, I did pretty well on it here too. The only issue is I started to run into where those knots were forming on the very end of this piece. I tried to be able to cut them off, but it just wasn't happening. So here what it looks like, especially from a distance, is that it gives me grain coloring or mineral streaking like you'd see in other materials. Just the very beginnings of some knots. And again, on the back side, you can see where that is much more noticeable. But by flipping it around, we still have the fact that this is honest white pine, um, but it has as a clean a look as possible. And when it goes with the drawer front for the top flip down section, I think it works really well, all three of these together. Now to get the width that I need for this, I resawed thicker boards and then flipped them open and give, and I have like a nice book match effect going here so that I can keep that straight grain appearance everywhere else. Now for the rest of my drawer components, one of the beauties of working with white pine is that it doesn't expand and contract a lot. So for the sides and back of the drawer, I'm gonna use half inch Baltic birch plywood. I have the table saw set up here, so I'm gonna rip blanks to width for the four sides that I need and the two drawer backs. There are only two basic drawers in this desk project, but there are a few details that we need to work through in order to complete those. The first of them is to tackle the joinery. Now at the front corners, I'm gonna use rabbits. So I'm gonna cut a wide, kind of deep rabbit on the ends of the drawer fronts for the plywood to match into. Later on, we'll reinforce those with some dowels. In order to do that, I've installed a dado blade in the table saw and recessed it in an auxiliary fence. Now the amount of the blade that's exposed matches the thickness of the plywood that I'm using. And then I raised it half of an inch. So what I'll do is I've also attached a long 
auxiliary fence on my miter gauge. That's going to guide and support the workpiece as I push it across the blade. That auxiliary fence is also going to back up the cut here because as those teeth come out of the pine, they can cause chip out. But if they're supported by the auxiliary fence, that's not going to happen. Rabbits are a fundamental element of joinery for projects such as these drawers. And we're going to stick with the fundamentals here as we talk about the joinery that will attach the back of the drawers to the sides. I'm going to use just a plain dado. So I've narrowed up the dado blade to match the thickness of the plywood. And then I'm going to cut a dado on the inside face of the drawer sides now. And I've also set that dado about an inch away from the back end. And that's going to make it a little bit easier to access everything at the back of the drawer without having to pull it all the way out of the desk. All right, we're sticking with the dado blade theme here, this time in the service of cutting a groove. I want to cut a groove on the outside faces of the drawers, and that's going to fit over a runner that gets installed in the case sides. So what I've done here is marked both of my drawers with a little bit of a triangle. And now what that does is shows that this is the top edge of the drawer and it's pointing towards the front. When I make these cuts, I want to keep those outside faces down and I want to keep the bottom edge of the drawer against the rip fence just for consistency. All right, the last of the work here at the table saw on the drawer for the joinery. I've reduced the dado blade setup here to just the two chipper blades to create a quarter inch wide groove that's going to hold the drawer bottom. Now this part gets cut on all of the drawer components, the two sides, the front and the back. Again, making sure that you keep the inside face of the drawer down and the bottom edge against the rip fence and you'll be all set. It's really easy after cutting the joinery on the drawer to want to get out the glue bottle and assemble this. But you want to hold your horses here because for this desk, the pulls that we're going to use on the drawers are shop made and kind of a cool design. And it's better to do these before you assemble the drawer than after. And the reason for that is I can clamp the drawer front right to the workbench top. Now the pull consists of two parts. There's going to be an oval shaped recess that goes in the drawer front and then we'll add a hardwood handle on it to give you a good grip. Now I've made a template out of some half inch MDF that I had laying around the shop, drew out the shape with some center lines, and then drilled out most of the waste and then used rasp and files to clean up so that I have a nice looking oval. And I've set it up so that I can align one edge of the template and one end with the edge and end of my drawer front. So I can do one side this way and then flip it over and make a symmetrical one on the opposite side. You could use double sided tape here to hold them in place, but I'm just going to align everything and the template is large enough that I can clamp it in place. For the actual routing, I'm using a small plunge router here and for the bit, I have a small pattern bit. Sometimes they're called dado cleanout bits, and that's because the cutting edges you'll see on here are very short. I think this one's probably about a quarter of an inch. So I can make small passes, probably do it in a series of three, working down to the final depth. And the process doesn't take very long at all. All right, there you go. Just a little sanding to do on the edge there and this is ready for the next stage. But before we do that, once I get all these recesses routed, we can glue up the drawers. I'm ready now to assemble the drawers. And what you wanna do here is prepare yourself so that the whole process can go smoothly. Cause once the glue goes on, it just seems like the anxiety level goes up a little bit. So I have the drawer parts laid out here, front side, back, the bottom, and then the two sides. And I'm going to start by putting glue in the drawer bottom grooves in the front. And 
And the nice thing about using the joinery that we did here is that I don't have to spread any glue. It's just tracing it into those grooves. Now what I also want to do is put some glue on the rabbits on the ends of the front here. And I'm going to put them, tuck it right into that corner. Now I'm going to fit the drawer bottom into the groove in the front, kind of centering it in the groove. Then I'll do the same thing with the back. Now it's time to add the sides. And again, I'm going to run glue in the dado for the back and the groove for the drawer bottom on both side pieces. All right, now my big focus here in getting the drawer assembled is making sure that it starts and stays square. That's why I like to use these clamping squares. I can put one in each corner, kind of pulling the, pulling the joints finger tight. And I can just work my way around the drawer. While the glue on the drawers is drying, we can work on something that goes into the case of our desk, and that's the runners. Now, I'm using hardwood runners that will fit into the dados that we routed into the sides of the desk in an earlier video. Now, what I like about it, and this is my favorite way of guiding drawers, is that the runner fits into that groove that we ran on the outside of the drawer sides. The result is that there's a lot of, there's a less friction and it's really easy to dial in both the fit and the smoothness of the drawer operation as well as its uh, gaps top and bottom. Now I've fit these runners to be pretty tight into the dados both in their width and thickness. And the reason is, is because they're wood, we can plane them down and really dial in the fit that we're looking for. So. To get things going here, what I'm going to do is put just a little bit of glue at the front and at the back and then a little bit in the middle because we have that solid wood panel that's going to move as the seasons progress. Just fit it in place and then I'm going to clamp it front to back and take care of the rest of them. All right, I have the drawers fitting on my desk project here. And one of the real advantages of using this kind of drawer control mechanism, these wood runners that are installed in the case sides, is just how easy it is to dial in and fine tune the fit of the drawers. And there's three ways that you can do this. The first is you can trim the top and bottom edges of those runners. You can use a shoulder plane to do that and you can just run it along the sides of the case, especially when you leave the back off so that you have full access to those runners. Now if your drawer is still binding side to side, that might mean that the runners are sticking out too far and binding in the bottom of the grooves in the sides of the drawers. Now for that, you just take a block plane and you can make passes down the side, trimming those runners on the face. There's one last way that you can trim the drawers, and I ended up using all three of these methods, and that is to adjust the depth of the groove in the drawer sides using a router plane. Now this is a kind of looks like a router. It's got two handles and the blade protrudes out the bottom. So what you can do is just take it and run it along the grooves, making minute adjustments to the depth of that groove. You want a smooth sliding fit for those drawers. 
And when you're satisfied with that, the next step is to head over to the table saw where we can make the handles for the drawers. The pulls for our drawers are made of wood also. I'm using a contrasting material, walnut in this case, that's gonna show up in the base in another video. Now, I'm gonna end up shaping them, but you'll notice that these are relatively short pieces. And the usual way of setting up a stop on the table saw isn't really gonna work here if I wanna use a long blank. And that's what I've done, is I've created a long blank that I can cut the handles from. It's 3 eighths of an inch thick, an inch wide overall, and I need to cut it to length. So what I'm gonna do instead is set up an offset stop that's clamped to my rip fence. So what I can do, slide the workpiece, bump it against the stop, slide it forward and make the cut. Once the cut is complete, that handle piece can just kind of sit loose next to the blade. Now, if I were trying to do this with the rip fence, that piece is gonna be bound right between the blade and the rip fence. It's a pretty dangerous situation and that piece can come rocketing right back at you. And it's really not something that I wanna experience. So this way I can still make multiple cuts and have them turn out to be the exact length that I need. All right, the pulls that we've cut to length now are still wider than what the recess is on the drawer fronts. So what I need to do is to trim them back a little bit. This has to go even farther back. But what I want to do is cut them back in small increments so that I can sneak up on a really snug fit into that recess. The way I'm doing that is at the table saw, I've set up a stop block and I can hold that piece right up against the stop block, make a cut, flip it around, make a cut on the opposite side. Now, because the stop block has a micro adjust feature on it, I can bump it out in small amounts and slowly widen that cut on each end until I can get that to just press right into that recess. It's gonna take a little bit, but once I have the setting all dialed in, I know that all of my handles will fit just right. Our desk project so far has a lot of straight lines in it, and I wanna break that up here in addition to using a complementary material. So on these pulls, I'm gonna give them just a little bit of an arc here, and that's gonna get echoed in the base that we're gonna build later on. Now, I wanted something that's gonna give me a nice smooth flowing curve, didn't really wanna try and set up some kind of a arrangement to work with a compass. My circle templates were all too small. Found out that my roll of double-sided tape works perfectly. I can just line it up on the corners and trace the line. Here at the bandsaw though, I'm gonna stay a little bit away from those lines so that I can sand right down to them and refine that shape without trimming away these ears too much. All right, there you go. Got the handles installed on the drawers. Now I use screws and glue to hold it in place, belt and suspenders here because you don't want those handles breaking off in use. And that wraps up this segment on our Pullman desk project. And we built the whole drawer, fit it to its opening and made some custom pulls on it. In our next video, we're gonna tackle the top of the desk as well as a really cool base design that goes along with it. Hope you stick around. If you want the plans for this project, they're available at woodsmithplans.com. If you're a Woodsmith Unlimited member, you get access to six free plans a year, and this can be one of those six. So you can check that out on the fulfillment side of that. Otherwise, we'll see you around next time on the next video. Bye, everybody.